Let's have a little listen before we, we talk about uh, uh, what uh, has been uh, going on. Uh, a little listen uh, to the Prime Minister in the House of Commons uh, telling us that he uh, welcomes the investigation uh, by uh, the police. I commissioned an independent inquiry into a series of events in Downing Street and the Cabinet Office as well as some other Whitehall departments that may have constituted potential breaches of the COVID regulations. That process has quite properly involved sharing information continuously with the Metropolitan Police, so I welcome the Met's decision to conduct its own investigation because I believe this will help to give the public the clarity it needs and help to draw a line under matters. Well, Labour Deputy Leader Angela Rayner had this to say. So it seems, Mr Speaker, potential crim criminality has been found in Downing Street. Yeah. What a truly damning reflection on our nation's very highest office. Well, as Sir Ian Duncan Smith, Prime Minister's welcoming this, but he's not really. A Prime Minister being investigated for breaking the laws that he himself brought in and, and uh, wagged his finger at us about every single night on the news, uh, well, his five o'clock Downing Street briefings. Um, surely he's not welcoming that. This is a very, very damning development for the Prime Minister, isn't it? Well, all these things are uh, very unhelpful at all in every single way. This shouldn't have happened in the first place. Uh, they're clearly, I'm, I will, I've always said, I'll wait till see what the report comes up with before I cast in a final judgment. Uh, but uh, there's no question, without even the final judgment, there is uh, a real failing here, uh, not just uh, from the Prime Minister, but across uh, the civil service and other pol uh, political players uh, in the culture. Uh, the reality is that we, as a, as, a, as a country, ended up in very strict uh, lockdown rules. As you know, I've not always been in favour of these. I voted against them on two occasions because I felt many of them, like not being able to go to funerals and not being able to visit your loved ones, were over onerous and wouldn't have actually stopped uh, people dying. Uh, but those those are the keys that, you know, if you make the rules, then you must also abide by them. And so uh, we need to get to the bottom of what happened to the culture. I mean, people I know were in Downing Street working sometimes 24, 48 hours around the clock, often sleeping. Uh, in their offices because of the uh, requirements to get uh, huge things done, sorting out PPE, sorting out uh, all the issues around testing and all the other things that we know about from the time that we spent doing that to, to get the crisis resolved. So I understand all of that, but that notwithstanding, there should have been greater clarity to say that you are in an office and therefore that means even though you're working with people face to face during the working hours, uh, you, you haven't got the facility just to have a break for a few minutes or for half an hour or something. Uh, you know, when you're finished work, you go home. Yep. Uh, that's the end of it. So, yes, all of that is really has not been good at all, been very bad. <clears throat> and um, the police deciding to look at this in terms of breaches of the law uh, isn't helpful at all. Uh, so that will... I mean, the Prime But 120,000 people faced fines uh, for uh, breaking COVID rules. Um, you know, the rules were brought in by uh, Boris Johnson and drawn up by a lot of his number 10 staff. The reality is, uh, you know, if 120,000 other people got done for it, um, they should face the same penalty, shouldn't they? Well, if the penalties exist and if the uh, police decide they want to look at this as a historical case, then... Yeah, I mean, it's up to the police, really, the, the, whether or not they decide uh, to prosecute or not, or whether they decide to use the fines, mm. uh, will be wholly up to them. Um, they haven't prosecuted all historical cases. No. Uh, they said the other day they drew the line under historical cases because they'd never stop. The truth that we've learned about all of this, which we must never forget, is the reality is most people behave sensibly. Uh, they didn't need to, be, uh, to have criminal uh, sanctions put against them. Yeah. Uh, and as we said, in, in, in Chris, over Christmas and January, people behaved reasonably. And look, the result has been that we didn't need to lock down uh, because we actually got control of it. But, but the that's, but that's the is... crucial thing. We we did have rules. We did have laws. Some, some were laws, some yeah. were rules, some were guidelines. Some, you know, some was the spirit of the law. Again, it's all for the ambiguity. We had Sir Peter Fahey, a former chief constable on the show an hour ago, saying that, you know, the prime minister and his staff are sort of relying on the ambiguity of the laws that they themselves helped to draw up uh, to as, as their defence. But no, I don't think anyone really listening right now is under any illusion that if uh, there's a bunch of 30 of you, including your wife and your interior decorator in, your, in a room when you're having uh, everyone singing Burr, 
happy birthday to you, that that is not a, a, a necessarily and vital uh, solely work meeting. And that was all that was allowed at the time. And no one thinks hanging around in a garden uh, for, till to the early hours of the morning with uh, with bottles of wine is, is a work event. They think of it as a party. So I, I think a lot of this is just the insult to our intelligence that we're getting from these defences. What do you make of those who are trying to come to the Prime Minister's aid? And I think perhaps not very well. Um, Connor Burns, a loyalist MP, has said the Prime Minister in the Cabinet Room, he was sitting there working when this birthday in, in June 2020, when he was ambushed with cake. Um, my my waistline is testament mm. to how often I'm ambushed with cake. Um, Richard Bacon, uh, another Conservative backbench MP, he and the House of Commons and the Chamber actually uh, compared uh, what the Prime Minister had to do. He said with other what others have done, he said the Prime Minister has committed a relatively minor offence. Now, the key thing is, this isn't just about someone having birthday cake. It's not about someone standing in a garden with some work colleagues, is it? This is about this is about millions of people facing and being forced into horrible sacrifices, not saying goodbye to loved ones, you not seeing their families, losing their jobs, losing their livelihoods. Um, uh, you know, people isolated for months and months on end at a time when it would appear the Downing Street staff, including the Prime Minister and his wife, were having a party every other day. Yeah, I, I come back to the point that I made earlier on. I, I'm not going to make a judgment other than this was appalling. Mm. I said earlier on this should never have happened. Uh, you know, the culture in Downing Street, both amongst civil servants and politicians, you know, it needed to have uh, a serious leadership uh, from the from all those relevant. Uh, and there should have been instructions nailed onto every single door on the basis that once you finish work, go home. You know, if you have to have a drink, and there's nothing open outside, go and have your drink at home uh, within the rules. Uh, that should have been there. There's no question at all about that. Uh, and I'm sure I will be standing by that when the report comes out. The key question you asked, though, about people defending him, I, I think genuinely uh, that my colleague shouldn't go around trying to excuse all of his things. Even the prime minister hasn't done that. The prime minister has said categorically this was wrong. Uh, he has apologised for it uh, as it stands at the moment, but we wait for the report. The one thing I won't do is, is follow the chain of leaks and deliberate uh, 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 testimonies, as it were, uh, to the media from Dominic Cummings, who himself uh, broke the rules dramatically and now sits in judgment on others. I think that's yeah. wrong. So I will wait for the report, for the calm judgment of uh, Sue Gray, uh, and make a decision about what I want to do. But my general view is uh, that this is a very dangerous time at the moment. Uh, and uh, every day that we spend on this is a day lost to serious government well, and, and we'll talk about elsewhere. some of those serious issues. But I mean, Jacob rees the leader of the House of Commons, um, he was uh, saying last night that uh, we have a system where, you know, the Prime Minister was elected, you know, as a personal, on his personal authority, almost a quasi-presidential system now in this country. Uh, and therefore, any change in leadership requires a general election. Now, I wasn't aware. I follow politics pretty closely. I wasn't aware of that constitutional change that we have had. Um, we've seen you know, Gordon Brown, Theresa May and Boris Johnson himself coming into office without a general election. Um, isn't part of the fear for lots of Tory MPs that they, they think, oh, well, you know, if we lose Boris Johnson, are we going to lose a vote winner, even though they think what he's done is wrong? Uh, and the concern that there would be a general election, that, that the polls are, are looking very bad right now. They're not sure who would uh, take over. But also a concern <laughs> that a prime minister that is wounded in the way he has been mm -hmm. wounded, who was unable to bring in uh, restrictions in December this year because of the re uh, the uh, revelations of the partying in number 10 in December 2021. Um, a man who has uh, you know, rescinded the plan B tomorrow, you know, plan B rules are, are going to be ending. That actually a, a sort of walking wounded prime minister is quite useful to an awful lot of backbench MPs, including yourself. So a lot of a lot of um, MPs who think that he should go are in two minds about whether or not it's a good idea. Well, first of all, can I just make one small correction, Julia? The reason why the Prime Minister didn't go into full lockdown had partly to do with the fact that many of us decided we didn't believe in it and voted against those regulations and therefore were proved to be right. And in the end, his judgment on not going in was right. I mean, uh, I'm not going to excuse what's gone on, but I do say that he got some of the big calls right during the course of this. Uh, the reality is that without, uh, you know, his determination and sometimes uh, uh, sort of controversial way of operating, 
we wouldn't have got the vaccines as early as we did. And he also yep. made a personal decision to get the booster vaccines when everybody was advising him yeah, I mean, not to do it. So I'm absolutely giving him credit. But, but in we're in that situation. So I'm not defending him, though, over the, over the charge of this. No, it but this is the thing. We're in the situation where people are saying, well, he made the, the right decisions on this and in this and that. And I completely yeah, agree. I mean, that's the and, and credit on that. However, <laughs> however, are we supposed to say, well, as long as he's done some things right, then, no. then we'll put up with a, a, a prime minister in this country who has... No moral authority left. Well, that's a judgment that you and others will make and I will make when it comes to the report. That's what I'm saying. I'm simply saying that, uh, you know, the decision he made before Christmas turned out to have been the right decision not to yep. lock down. All of the scientists and others that were panicking like mad yep. have been wrong. They've been wrong, by the way, on many occasions so far on this. And I wish that we hadn't gone into these incredibly uh, uh, difficult lockdown rules. I, I don't think that many of these were necessary. That's my personal view. Uh, but when it comes to the judgment about whether the prime minister uh, um, should remain as prime minister, well, that's a decision that many uh, parliamentary uh, members of the, the, the Conservative Party will make uh, during the course of the next uh, few days. And I would say we'll reserve judgment okay. and, and try and get the balance right on this. But there are big, big issues as well that well, we have to balance. That, well and that, that is, that's a very good point. I just find I do want to touch on some of those big issues. We've got the cost of living crisis back home. We've got Ukraine uh, 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 on, in terms of foreign policy. Prime Minister you know, almost missed making a statement to the House of Commons yesterday about how UK troops would be uh, contributing to any NATO deployment to protect our allies in Eastern Europe if Russia does invade Ukraine. Um, you know, we, we are possibly on the verge of a European war. And yet we are talking about people having birthday cakes and drinking bottles of wine in their garden two years ago. So I can understand why a lot of people think that it is crazy. But again, it is very important that we can trust what the Prime Minister says to us, the dispatch box, um, uh, in those circumstances. Um, on Ukraine, I know you've, you've been speaking about this issue as well. Do you think this is where our full focus should be right now? Well, I think we have to focus on this. This is very dangerous. I've argued for some time, as you know, I'm sanctioned by the Chinese government yeah. for speaking out about their abuses and genocide in uh, Xinjiang amongst the Uyghur peoples. Uh, but right now, I believe we have a kind of axis uh, uh, of uh, those who are non-democrats, anti-democracy uh, dictators, uh, China, Russia and Belarus. Uh, and they are opposed to the very way that we live our lives, believing in democracy, uh, the rule of law uh, and human rights. And they oppose that. It's a constant. So Mr. Putin's drive on this to get what he calls spheres of influence around him, rather like uh, Stalin used to believe in, uh, has to be opposed. You know, free people in countries where they wish to make their own decisions has to be defended by free people. And that's why this is so important. And by the way, I don't uh, actually categorically do not uh, the little the whole issue around the decisions taken during this process of parties and Downing Street. Mm. Uh, I just want to make sure that we don't lose focus whilst we uh, understand what happened yeah. on this, because this could be very dangerous. And if it, it, by the way, President Xi in China is watching carefully to see what the West does over this, because he is now threatening war on Taiwan. He's taken over the South China Seas against international rules. We are seeing aggressive expansionist behavior from this axis of evil. And I have to tell you, we need in the West to stand up to it Otherwise, before we know what's happened, it will be banging on our own door. This is the serious nature. Couldn't agree with you more on all of that. I have to say, Sarin Duncan-Smith, uh, 